Thank you for the introduction, Jim. Um, hello, everybody. My name is David Lush. I'm the CTO at MindGym. Um, my background is as a distributed systems engineer. Um, I've worked through Java, Python, done a little bit of Scala and JavaScript. Um, I've been leading and managing technology teams for about 10 years' time. Um, and today, I've got an interesting talk um, around a little use case that's largely saved us from having to write any query APIs. Um, I'm going to talk through uh, what we do as a business, so what MindGym does. Uh, what we built and how what we built works. Uh, first of all, where Mind Gym. Um, so I've been with Mind Gym for just over a year. I joined, joined in April of last year. Um, as a company, we've got about 20 years behavior change experience with some of the world's uh, largest brands. It's people like Deliveroo, eBay, Uber, Cadbury's. Uh, we do about 40 million a year in revenue. So that's 40 million pounds. Um, we've got high growth as well. Um, so we've got about 300 employees across London, New York, and Singapore. And we work with a large network of external coaches as well. Um, so traditionally, our business uh, runs on coach-led sessions of 20 up to about 1,500 people. Um, but recently, we've been building a new digital platform. Uh, so therefore, lots of interesting architectural decisions, lots of greenfield, greenfield systems that we're building. Um, this talk focuses on one specific set of problems that we're trying to solve. Um, we need to serve well-structured content from our CMS. Um, our UI is very task-focused, so that our participants, our users, um, lots of small tasks. Um, we, um, we're, with what we're developing, we want to be able to look back in time at the actions that a user took, so something called a temporal query. Um, and we don't really want to write lots of rigid REST APIs and maintain the source code that comes with that. Um, so first of all, what have we built? Um, the core of our platform makes use of event sourcing and CQRS. Um, it's probably worth touching on that because not everybody's come across it in their, um, in their um, working lives. Um, so this gives us a separation of data flows in and out of the system. Um, so every time a user interacts with a UI, it generates an event into our um, event API. Um, every time they click a button, scroll a page, um, this is written to an event log. Uh, that's a ledger of every action that's ever occurred. Um, and we also use some of these events to mutate state into uh, a user-facing database, so in this instance, Postgres. Um, so some examples of this could be a user has updated his or her password. Um, that, in turn, mutates state and changes um, the, the password in the database. Um, probably a bit more of an interesting example would be someone's clicked a button at the end of a page, um, and this mutates state to say the user has um, finished an exercise and progressed on their learning journey, for example, uh, with us. Um, and then what are some of the impacts of a system like this and CQRS? Um, it's a little bit more complex to work with than sort of simple CRUD, so I create, read, update, delete. Um, you need to deal with concerns such as event schemas and versioning um, and eventual consistency as well. Um, but there's some positive impacts as well. So read and write capacity can be scaled independent of one another uh, because the inbound is a very separate path to the outbound. Um, and as I mentioned in the previous slide, this allows for temporal queries. So I can look back at the, the state of somebody's learning journey all the way back through history. Um, and as we develop um, more sophisticated analytics and build on it, we've still got all of our event history that we can look at uh, with any future models. Um, in terms of where Strapi fits in our system, uh, we've also got some beautiful content in there. Uh, we looked at about 40 different CMSs before landing on Strapi. Uh, this included going to a short list of five and then do improved concepts with only three of them. Um, so some of the key features that brought us into Strapi were the fact that it's a headless CMS, um, has a GraphQL API that we can access, um, gives single sign-on for our content authors. So in terms of like an active, um, active directory single sign-on, um, there is internationalization. Um, I think just released into Beaver if I'm stealing somebody's fund there. Um, there's, there are webhooks for new content, um, and it's open source and uses a very similar stack to the engineers that we've got in house. Um, the killer features for really though are around being able to define custom content types and define dynamic zones for our content offers. So we can put good guardrails around content. Um, but still allow some um, some freedom in certain areas inside of the content model. Um, it also allows us to build um, a one-to-one -one relationship between, between our UI component library and our content schema. Um, leading on from this, this brings up um, a challenge. Uh, we've got two key data sources in this instance. We have our CQS restore, um, and we have the content that we've got in Strapi. 
we want to be able to access both from the UI. Uh, we need this to be secure. Uh, there's a few different options for how we can tackle this. Uh, we can write some APIs for the read store um, and access the buffer read store and Strapi separately. Uh, we could put a GraphQL server on the read store and again, access them both separately. Uh, but it'd be nice if there's a tool that allows federated access um, and we landed on Hasura as a nice open source tool that can give this consistent access. When We went down the Hasura route for a number of reasons as well. Um, here are the different options that we looked at. Um, so we looked at putting an Apollo server on the back end. I think we are using an Apollo client in the, uh, our front end as well. Uh, we considered Hasura and we considered PostgreSQL. Um, I'm not going to read out all of the bullet points that are on the page. Um, there's some key callouts that are that are worth mentioning for why we landed where we landed. Um, so Hasura gave a really nice out of the box experience uh, with no real coding required. Um, there's automatic schema inference from Postgres, um, automatic inference of relationships from primary and foreign key constraints in Postgres as well. Um, and that remote schema concept allowed us to bridge our pre-existing um, Strapi GraphQL endpoint. Um, one thing that's worth mentioning is we found the configuration a little bit painful as it was all API calls rather than declarative and sort of um, config files that provisioning and deployment time. This could be that we've missed something or it's a new feature that's coming up soon. So if I move on into how does this all work a little bit for us? Um, I'll start with something really simple. Um, so this is this is Strapi content for us. This is how it looks in the browser. Um, you've probably all done this a million times. If you want to look at the same, you'd be going to open the dev tools, open the network tab, filter down to XHR. And for us, this comes up as GraphQL in that list just because that's an MVM point for us. Um, in this instance, this is a content for a card that lives on our home screen. Um, and again, nothing so special to call out. It's all quite standard. Um, very similar example. Uh, so again, this is in the DevTools and XHR. In this instance, we're retrieving um, data from our Postgres that's the, where the schema has been um, automatically inferred by Hasura for us. Um, in this instance, it's allowing us to do things like get the user information and see when the user last logged in. So if, for example, if the user's never logged in before, we can put them on an orientation journey um, and we can manage a smooth onboarding for them. Um, so those, those two bits, quite simple, but showing that um, that retrieval of data in a federated manner from Strapi and CQRS out into the UI. Um, there's a couple of nice extra features that we've been making use of. Um, so one is in Hasura, there is configurable security. So you can call out to a webhook, or you can do a straight JWT configuration either as well, so we've no need for a call here. Uh, we've gone down the call out route. Um, this webhook for us can only, so the lander at the top can only be accessed from within our private network. Uh, we pass through request headers, including the token. Uh, we validate the token in the webhook, uh, check a few other bits and pieces. Um, and then as we come back, we pass in a few um, HTTP headers that are used by Hasura. Um, so like a Hasura user ID and a Hasura role. Um, but yeah, nice packaged up security. And again, allows us to keep our approach consistent with where we do it elsewhere in the stack. Um, and then finally, um, there's another nice little thing that the team has done. Uh, we've been using a code generator or code gen to generate both TypeScript code and to generate um, Elm bindings because we're using a mixture of view and Elm in our front end. Um, so on screen is a demo of the GraphQL through to TypeScript. Uh, we use this at development time and commit the outputs into a repository. So for us, this is our npm run types generate um, and is defined in our package JSON. Um, this queries the endpoint for us and generates a TypeScript using code gen. Um, it means we get good type safety guarantees in our client code. Um, and that, yeah, and again, there's the Elm type safety, but that's a whole other presentation in itself. Um, we're not yet at the point where we can quantify the benefits of the approach that we've taken because we're quite a new team and we didn't have a lot of data from uh, before we started working on this. Um, but anecdotally, the, the, this combination of uh, Strapi and Hasura has really accelerated us. It stopped um, us needing from having to write a whole bunch of front end code, uh, sorry, back end code that I would have done on previous projects. Um, hope you enjoyed a little window into our decisions over the past few months, and I'm happy to field any questions on Discord. 
Thank you, David. Please give him a virtual high five on Discord for that amazing story. I think we are going to see more and more companies like MindGym using Azura or Apollo Federation to provide a consistent federated graph interface. Okay, so we have one more special guest before we wrap up this keynote. Someone who is directly contributing in the innovation happening in the Jamstack ecosystem with a bird eyes view of the future of the modern web. Please join me in welcoming back on the stage Strapi CEO Pierre Burgi for a fireside chat with Vercel co-founder and CEO Guillermo Roche.